So I want you guys to draw me a Oh, my God. 
guys, I guess in the midst of all of this, especially for the purpose of the video, I shall be promoting quality and diversity. Therefore, if you come across anyone who seems unusual or has an asymmetrical face, be nice to them. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, be kind, show courage, have faith in them. So me yeah. just been today. There are some criminals who look unattractive. However, there are some criminals who do look attractive. There are some people who look unattractive and they look like they're likely to be criminals just based on their appearance, but they're, they're I don't want to say disfigurement or face. <laughs> their asymmetrical face isn't their fault. Or if they have an eye defect, it's not their fault. It could be influenced by other factors. Maybe they were in an accident. Maybe they have a defective gene. So you can't just like profile someone based on their appearance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, you can't say you're a criminal because you're ugly. It's rude. Yeah. <laughs> this part of forensic psychology is going way back to when we were apparently primates. And we have something called the atavistic form. And the word atavistic comes from the root word atavus in Latin. And it means ancestor. And with reference to forensic psychology, they say that criminals commit crimes because they have reverted to their atavistic form, meaning their form before they were fully a human being. So they reverted back to a primate. What? Yeah. Oh, it's mad. So you see my last, my little paragraph for you guys to write down, an explanation for criminal behavior suggesting that certain individuals are born with a criminal personality and this innate personality is a throwback to primate forms. And our key researcher is this guy called Lombroso. He was Italian. Lombroso. <laughs> and he said that offenders possess similar characteristics to primates and that explains why they committed criminal offenses. So if you see someone who's got similar characteristics to primates, that essentially explains why they commit criminal offences. What do you guys think? Doesn't make, make sense. Doesn't make sense. Let's go a little bit deeper. Maybe home They argue that Lombroso had some racial, um, racist tendencies. She said dark skin. Mm? Italian. That's all. How can he say words? Yeah. So, guys, please don't be offended. Remember, this is way, way back. But he said, in terms of the atavistic features that criminals would possess, strong, prominent jaw, high cheekbones. So, all of you that are doing contour for the cheekbones, apparently, in, your, in his case, you'll be a criminal. Dark skin, so extra toes, nipples, or fingers. <laughs> Murderers tend to have bloodshot eyes, curly hair, long ears, um, fraudsters are thin, have thin and weedy lips, other non-physical traits, unemployment, tattoos, as most of you mentioned, and use of criminal slang. So this is what he said represented atavistic features. Now let's say, let's find out how he done it. So, I investigated the facial and cranial features of hundreds of Italian convicts, both living and dead. After, after examining over 383 living criminals, I concluded that 21% had one atavistic trait, so those traits that we saw in the previous slide, and 43% had at least five. The majority of the crimes were accounted for by atavistic characteristics. So he's saying that he's able to pin down a criminal if he sees those atavistic features. Remember this is way, way back. Sticking with the whole idea that you're able to determine whether someone is a criminal based on their physiological appearance, there was a guy called Kretschmer. He studied 4,000 criminals and suggested that they fit into four body types. So sober to types, Soma means body, so body types. The first one is leptosome, and he says that person is tall and thin, and leptosomes tend to commit crimes of death. Yeah, so death crimes. If you're from Nigeria, if you hear lepa lepa, that's what it means, so it's slip. Athletic, tall and muscular, they tend to commit crimes of violence. Picnic, short and fat. 
So obviously, I, I can't remember what country he's from, but picnic for them was spelled very differently. I just think picnic food, yeah. short fat. And some of you actually, when you were drawing your criminals, said that the person was short, or they were skinny, but they tried to pad up in order to look fat. Apparently, this is how the person commits crimes of deception and violence. And then again, there are some people that don't actually fit into any of those three categories. So there's a mixed one called dysplastic. And these people tend to commit crimes of morality, so maybe fraud. Yeah. So my question is, which gender is prone to criminal behaviour? Well, Let me tell you what Lombroso said. Hmm. Lombroso said that women are naturally jealous. <laughs> Apparently we are insensitive to pain. Now I don't know. And of you, I, for me, when I'm going through, I'm going through. What do you mean? Yeah. Through? What do you mean? Tom. What? You know who Tom is? Yeah. The time of the month. Oh. oh. When I'm going through. Oh, that's I'm not insensitive to that. Passive. Mm -hmm. Apparently, women are passive. Mm -hmm. And hold on. Apparently, women are low in intelligence. Mm -hmm. According to Lombrosa and his daughter, even agreed with him. <laughs> well, <laughs> his <laughs> one daughter. <laughs> maternal instinct, this neutralizes our negative traits. Negative traits. So it neutralizes our criminal ability. Yeah? And he says that the women who actually became criminals, they became criminals because they had masculine traits. And masculine traits in a woman is toxic. However, masculine traits in a man is okay. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I, I was somewhat offended when I read this. We put our keyword, where is it? Androcentric. When someone forms a view about women, they're actually considering the views of women. I don't think, other than his daughter, who of course may agree with him for many reasons, he didn't do research. This is going off stereotypical opinions. All right, so guys, the homework is please revise. Because next lesson, we have 30 minutes of exam questions. I'm going to ask you three questions in the exam. So I need you to revise. Defining crime, the top-down approach to profiling, and the bottom-up approach to profiling. My hint to you is strongly revise the bottom-up approach. Give me your all. Give me the juice. Read the worksheet. Go through the PowerPoint. Memorize everything. No way inside out. To the glory of God. Amen. Alright guys, thank you for a great lesson.